if you go into the woods. It is a beautiful late afternoon as you open the front gate and step out onto the path. Birdsong fills the air, and you can feel the warmth of the golden sun that hangs in an azure sky, embracing your shoulders and neck. Flowers grow about your feet, nestling at the side of the path, marking the route onwards, a colourful guide, so that you can readily view the way ahead. You adjust the basket that hangs in the crook of your arm, a basket that is stuffed with delicious fare, forbidden fruits, and other enticing goodies that are meant for another. You smile and begin walking, a spring in your step, as you hear a voice call out from behind you. Stay on the path. Do not stray from the path. You smile again at this warning. You know all about not straying from the path. It is all you have been told for some time. The warnings and the cautionary tales about what happens when you stray from the path began as frightening tales told before bedtime, but their foreboding content has lessened as you have blossomed. You still smile politely as older heads than yours warned you about what lay in the forest beyond the path, of waiting predators that are red of tooth and claw. These once-dreaded fables are no more than an opportunity for you to curry favour as you kneel next to the wise ones and listen, sharing attentiveness. But your mind has drifted elsewhere. Your thoughts dwell on whether those supposed savages do exist deep within the darkness of the forest, or whether they are just lost souls, poor fellows abandoned by the world, who lurk amidst the shadows of tree and bush, not because they seek to do harm, but because they have been shunned and know no other way of behaving. You contemplate whether, if they were shown love, caring and affection, that these wild folk might just be welcomed back, and then be able to prove they are not the threat that they are always held out to be. The tales from those older and more experienced had less of an effect on your reasoning, and this soon gave way to listening to the stories from your peers. One of your friends swore she saw one of these supposed savages watching her from a hillock within the forest. She spoke of how he watched her intently with the most mesmerising and piercing eyes, which made her feel wanted, but in a good way. You all giggled as she recounted this tale, a flush of desire making its way up her chest and neck. Another of your group recalled of how she also saw one of these apparent beasts. He was gathering firewood, and she stopped to watch his lithe and frankly alluring figure as he stooped amongst the foliage gathering logs. She smiled as she told how he turned and caught her watching, but she felt no alarm as he too fixed her with the most penetrating look, and then slowly ran his tongue across his lower lip. Your friend places her hand to her mouth, and confesses to that warm feeling down below, as he continued to regard her. You admit you felt a pang of jealousy, as the gathering desires of womanhood began to flow through your blossoming body, and you longed for your own encounter with one of these mysterious forest dwellers. Now you skip along the meandering path as you recall these stories and others, wondering how much is truth and how much is just the product of an overactive over imagination. You like to think it is the former, and with that in mind, you chose your best dress and stole a little of your elder sister's makeup, carefully applying the blood-red concoction of beeswax and crushed bright red berries to your lips, as you formed a cupid's bow, wondering if he too waited amongst the trees, ready to fire one of his love arrows through your heart. You shrugged off the disapproving look from your father, as you explained your appearance was such to look your best for your grandmother. The small smile that your mother gave you, as she handed you the laden basket, told you she knew otherwise. Some time into your journey through the forest, the flowers become less 
as the amount of light which percolates through the canopy above becomes reduced. The trees are numerous, stretching up high into the sky, and occasionally you stop and look up towards the treetops, feeling dizzy as you do so. A breeze gathers, and the trees sway a little as the eddies of wind disturb the bushes that grow beside the path. You can still see the way ahead, which is not as pretty now, but you are not concerned. You've walked this path so many times before. Admittedly, that was with your parents, or later with your elder sister, but now this is the first time you have been allowed to venture out into the vast forest yourself, hence the warnings to stay on the path. You scurry along, almost tripping on a long thorny vine which has grown across the path. The route through the forest is less distinct now, the moss and wild grass obscuring it in places, the bushes encroaching on it. But you press on regardless. You feel the first splash of rain land on your nose, and then another. You halt and set the basket down so you can lift your hood about your head and keep your carefully pinned hair dry. You stoop and collect the basket once again, moving neatly and efficiently in the manner that you have been taught, bending at the knees and straightening carefully. You are about to continue your walk when you hear a noise, a strange, guttural sound, which seems to come from nowhere and everywhere. You cock your head, but do not hear it again as you step forward and resume your journey. The noise comes again and you spin around before letting out a gasp. There is a man stood right behind you on the path, tall and handsome, and your surprise immediately gives way to round-eyed admiration for this elegantly dressed stranger clad in emerald green. He lifts his hat and gives an exaggerated bow. His gaze returns to you, a pair of dark, dark eyes, which seem to bore right into you, but you can help and stare at the glinting and mesmerising pupils. Good day, young lady, he says with a deep and rich voice which makes you feel strange inside, but in a good way. What are you doing alone in the forest on the cusp of evening? I am going for a walk to my grandmother's house. You answer firmly, and stand as tall as you can. Alone? he asks again. Yes, what of it? you ask, as those glittering eyes dart left and right. Oh, nothing save that a young lady so pretty as you should not be left unaccompanied. I know the way, you answer. Perhaps you do, but the way knows you better, he answers, and smiles, showing a toothy grin. My, what a lot of teeth you have, you cannot help but remark. Yes, all the better to eat the beasts of the forest with, he answers. You eat the animals in the forest? Of course. How else am I to survive? Anything that comes through this forest belongs to us. Us? There are more of you? Indeed. This forest is ours. It is our hunting ground. So the stories are true, then? You declare in a tone that is a mixture of wariness and delight. Very true. So where did you spring from? How did you know I was here? You ask as your eyes never leave this handsome and beguiling stranger. Oh, nearby, but it was not difficult to miss you, he says, and reaches out a hand to touch your blood-red and vibrantly coloured cloak. This made you stand out from everything else, he adds. My grandmother made it. She told me she chose red because it is the colour of danger. A warning, if you will, you reply. So it is, and such an attractive shade of red, if I may say so, so recognisable and obvious. Recognisable as what? you ask. Oh, that does not matter, he says quickly, 
May I escort you? I know a shortcut to your grandmother's house, just through here. He proffers his arm as he points through the trees. You peer into the gloom and then look back at him. You pause for a moment, but that gaze of his, those eyes which seem to promise so much of that which you want to experience, draw you in. And you have to. You want to obey. Of course, that is most kind of you, you say politely. He nods, and he stands by your side as you begin to walk. You look ahead and fail to see the red glow around those dark eyes, and the especially long tongue which has slid from his mouth and now runs across the top of those now sharp white teeth. He begins to talk as he steers you towards the trees and off the beaten path.